We are at the spot where a former NBA player's body was found. This was back in 2010. No one was arrested for the crime for many years. Lorenzen Wright was his name. He was six foot 11, something like 257 pounds at the time of his death. When they found his body, his body only weighed 57 pounds. It had been sitting, laying out here in the hot sun, middle of summertime, literally melting away. We're gonna take you to his grave, tell you more about the story, tell you why it took him so long to find anybody guilty of this crime. And we cordially invite you to come along. Wright was a star basketball player and met his future wife, Shara, while attending Booker T. Washington High School here in Memphis. Their marriage seemed to be pretty good for a long time. They even had seven kids together. Wright played for five different NBA teams, including two stints with the Atlanta Hawks and several seasons with his hometown, Memphis Grizzlies. After being drafted seventh overall by the Los Angeles Clippers in 1996, Lorenzen made a lot of money and the couple spent it just as quickly as it came in. As the money dried up, so did the marriage, and by February of 2010, their divorce had been finalized. As part of the divorce agreement, Lorenzen was ordered to buy a $1 million life insurance policy meant for their children in case of his death. On July 22, 2010, just five months after their divorce, Shara reported Lorenzen missing. His body was found in this area here on July 28th. When his body was found, this was a completely wooded area and there were no lights on the road. This is a cut through road. It's actually one that he used many times, they say, because his house was near here. So he knew this road well, totally dark. Now, since then, these apartments have been added. Some things have been added on the road, but the whole thing was just woods, dark. Now, on the night of Lorenzen's murder, he made a 911 call from his cell phone and on that call, you can hear him barely talking just a little bit. And then you hear a bunch of shots, something like 11 or 12 shots on the 911 call. Georgia 911, where's your emergency? Hello? 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 I don't have nothing to do. Hello? Hello? For some reason, this was not reported. Actually, the city, I think, was later sued and lost that suit and had to pay out some money for this. That call was not reported. And when they realized that a famous basketball player was missing, I guess someone remembered, oh, I got a call that night with some shots in the background. So they finally looked back into the call log. They were able to trace some cell phone towers around here and figure out a generalized area where his body might be. And sure enough, that's why they came here and were able to find his body here. Several people who lived in the neighborhood Shara lived in at the time of the murder were suspicious of her right away. We are at the house where Lorenzen's ex-wife Shara used to live. This is the last place he was ever seen at. Yeah, he had gone out with a buddy. He hadn't seen this guy in quite a long time. He called him up, said, I'm in town. So they went out. The buddy said that he then got a call from his wife, Shara, here at the house. She was freaking out on the phone. He said, take me back to the house. I got to deal with this. And then I'm going to call you a little bit later, and we're going to go out. Of course, he never did receive another phone call. He dropped off Lorenzo here, and that was it. Some other interesting things about this. So on the night he disappeared, July 19th, neighbors say they saw right back here in the backyard. You see the fire pit there. I don't know if it's the same one. But neighbors say they saw a fire raging in the fire pit in the backyard of this house. Shara was there with another man, according to what the neighbors said. And they said, this is one of the hottest nights of the year. So that's why they remembered this so well, because like, what are they doing out there burning things on this really hot night? Another thing that the neighbors said is that Shara many times would be out here walking the streets, yelling into her phone. They said she would come outside and walk down the streets, yelling about demanding money and asking for money. She was so caught up in the need for money Lorenzo made 55 million in his career, but they had managed to go through that money very quickly. And there's something to be said about someone that is willing to commit murder for the idea of putting more money in their pocket. Money has become 
more important than family, more important than basically life itself. Shara told police that she had been threatened at her home by three men carrying guns trying to find Lorenzen six weeks before his murder. She said she didn't report it because she feared for her life. She also told police Lorenzen had left her house with an unknown man and a box of drugs he was looking to sell on the night of his murder. She received the $1 million life insurance money about a year after Lorenzen's death. It's normal for a life insurance company to hold back money for a while when there is a suspicious death. Shira blew through almost all the money right away by buying a house, furniture, fancy cars, and going on trips. Finally, a family member stepped in and sued her to slow down the spending so she would have some left for her children, who the money was meant for to begin with. We're now at the grave of Lorenzen Wright. Also, his daughter, Sierra Wright, is buried next to him. In Memphis, Tennessee. This is Calvary Cemetery. For the next seven years, no one was charged with Lorenzen's murder. Shira moved to Houston and lived with a journalist by the name of Kelvin Cowens for a while. When they broke up, she moved to California with her children. Meanwhile, Shira's cousin Jimmy Martin was convicted of second-degree murder in a different case. When it came time for sentencing, he told detectives he had some information for them in the Lorenzen Wright case. He said he, along with Billy Ray Turner, who was a landscaper and a deacon of the church Shira went to at the time, had been asked by Shira to kill Lorenzen while he was in Atlanta. Their attempt failed, but he said after Lorenzen was killed, he was contacted by both of them to help clean up the crime scene, which he agreed to do. And he also said he knew where the gun used in the murder was. He said they had driven to Mississippi and dropped the gun in a lake. Police searched the lake, found the murder weapon, and arrested Shara on December 15, 2017. They also arrested Turner. On July 25, 2019, Shara pled guilty to facilitation of first-degree murder Turner is still awaiting trial. Shara was sentenced to 30 years in prison. However, she only has to serve 30% of that, which means she could be out in 2026. It's crazy to think about, but that does have to do with good behavior. Her behavior has not been so good. There's actually been more than 50 incidences where she's gotten in some sort of trouble while in prison. One time she was actually naked in her cell, had the water running, and blocked it off so that she was trying to flood her cell out and saying, yelling out, screaming at the top of her lungs, we're going swimming, y'all. And they had to cover up her cell with papers and figure out a way to get that water to stop. So she's not exactly been a model prisoner, so it might be a little bit longer before she gets out. Why she could get out at all seems a little silly. Hopefully she serves much longer than that. Hopefully she'll do the whole thing. Thanks for watching.